Today on the channel, we are taking the Hildegun apron from Ikea and transforming it into an 18th century tradesman apron. For $2.99, I figured I can't go wrong, and I can't get striped fabric that's 100% cotton for any cheaper than that, so this is going to be a quick and easy DIY. The first thing that I did was find the center point of the apron. The style of the apron that I'm emulating here is the one that buttons to a men's vest and forms a triangle at the top rather than a rectangular bib. This was really easy to do. I found the center point and manipulated the fabric to make it a straight line from the center point down to the waist high. I eyeballed this and did it by what looked best instead of doing any kind of measurements. Once it looked good, I pinned it. This style of apron was one of many in the 18th century, and there's quite a few depictions of various tradesmen from the iron industry to the confectionery industry, depicted in Diderot's encyclopedia. These illustrations show this type of apron, among others, so there is definitely historical precedent for this particular style. I use the same technique on the other side, really relying on look and feel here for the symmetry. The reason I'm making this project is because my partner and I are participating in an education day hosted by a local historical society for the region's bicentennial anniversary. He'll be discussing spices and tea in Upper Canada in the early 19th century, so he needed an apron if he's talking about culinary history. This is the vest that he'll be wearing, and I've pinned it at the top to give you an idea of how it will sit on a person once it's done. Here's the back of the apron. To be proper about it, I would have to cut off the end and finish the edges again. However, I've chosen not to do that because it's not that much to keep folded over and I don't just want to cut it off and throw it out because I have no use for something that small. All I'm going to do is unpick the neckties and save them for something else. And then I'll secure down the ends with a stitch that won't be visible from the front side. It'll be a little thicker, a little reinforced, but at the end of the day, for something like this, it really doesn't matter that much to me to keep it like this instead of just cutting it and finishing it again. I took advantage of the nice weather and brought the apron outside to do some hand sewing. For the main stitching, I used a running back stitch. Of course, this is a very durable and historical hand stitching technique. Then for a couple minutes, I struggled trying to pick out the very fine stitching that attached the neckties, but I finally got them in the end. Last but not least was prepping the buttonhole. I cut this one to fit the buttons currently on the vest, but it will be big enough to really accommodate anything, and there's about an inch of clearance above it, so you still get that nice look of the peak. I used some fray check around the end for extra reinforcement, and then I used three strands of blue embroidery floss for the actual buttonhole. And that is how you take a simple around the neck apron that looks like this into something that would be appropriate in the 18th and early 19th century, which looks a little like this.